So here's a topic I don't think I've ever seen anybody cover, but it actually applies to like the vast majority of cars out there that we play around with. And open rear ends. Nobody ever talks about the open differential and what can be done with it. But I'm going to do that today. And we're going to talk about the history, the performance history of open differentials, because you might find some surprising stuff there. So one of the things you have to understand, and, and again, like I said, the vast majority of cars that we deal with have open rears. Even if you're dealing with an old muscle car, like for instance, Chrysler muscle cars, they came with open rears standard. They had 323 gears, 355 gears, but unless you ordered a sure grip, you got an open diff just like this one. And a Chrysler wasn't as bad, the, the, the traction issues weren't quite as bad as you had with Ford and GM leaf spring cars or trailing link cars because the asymmetrical leaf spring design on the Chrysler and the extra partial leaf they put on the passenger side managed the torque a little bit better and kept both tires planted. And this is what you have to understand about an open wheel. Under optimum circumstances, it wants to spin both wheels evenly. It's only when it's forced to let one go that there's a problem. And in a typical acceleration situation, what's happening is it's an opposite torque reaction to what's happening with the engine. So picture this now. You've got an open rear in the car. The engine, you accelerate, the engine tries to lift up the left front, the, the driver's side front. Rotation is pushing it in that direction. The counter reaction to that happens at the rear end. The same force that's lifting up on the left front of the motor is lifting up on the right rear or the right passenger side of the rear axle. And so when that tire becomes light, that's when the differential, that's when the spider gears kick in and allow that wheel to spin. So that's why you, you see 90% of the one wheel peels, it's the passenger side rear that's smoking. The only time you'll get the driver's side rear to smoke is when it's, it's on really loose gravel or, or the road is wet or it's sandy or whatever. It'll spin the left rear. But generally speaking, it'll always be the right rear on a one-wheel peel because of the torque reaction. So now speaking of that, let's talk about the performance history of open rear ends because in some applications, it's actually been preferred over the years. And one of them, is, this is going to be surprising, is top fuel dragsters. Up until around 1972, 1973, the standard equipment on a top fuel dragster was an open diff. Now, funny cars used, because funny cars had a wider rear track in the day, back then, they used a locker type of rear or a spool, whatever was available, because it was more of a torque reaction. The engine was further out and the rear tread width was wider, so you had that torque reaction wanting to lift up on the right rear. Dragsters, on the other hand, had a different situation. The engine was only about 18 or 20 inches out from the differential, so it was, they were tied together. And they were tied together in, a, in a, a frame that had no suspension. So they were basically locked together as a unit. In that application, the torque reaction that's lifting the left front of the engine is at the same time planting the right rear. So those cars had an even bite. And one of the things about top fuel from that era, like I says, up until about 1972, 1973, the Ford 9-inch hadn't become the standard, the go-to rear yet. And most cars were still using the 8 and 3 quarter Chrysler, the 49 case 8 and 3 quarter Chrysler, which is exactly what these things are. And this is the exact carrier that would have been used in a top fuel dragster. The only modifications they would make to them is it would shim the spider gears a little bit tighter just to take some of the, some of the looseness out. Basically, so that instead of one wheel braking traction and freewheeling, it would have that little bit more resistance, and instead of freewheeling, it would skip a couple of times and go. Now, the reason for that, the reason for the preference of the open rear on those cars was because they were a little bit skittish. So if you had both wheels locked, and the wheelbase in those days was only 170, 180 inches, if you had both wheels locked, when the car would get out a little bit, it would, it would really want to move. But with the open rear, you'd let one wheel would be allowed to slip a little bit, and the car would stay on the state straight and narrow. And uh, like I said, that's, this right here is the exact rear that would have been used, let's say, in a 1970, 1971 circuit top fuel dragster. They had another place in lower horsepower drag cars, lower horsepower gas burners, 
right? Like for instance, stock eliminator or modified production, any of the lower horsepower cars where you didn't really, you weren't really like whacking the tires on the starting line. If you can get the car to move the first two or three feet off the starting line without breaking traction, then the advantage of an open rear is that it's very, very hard to get two tires, two slicks that are the exact same rollout. You know, it's the same height, same rollout with the same growth tendencies. And so any inequities between those two tires would show up in a locked rear end or a spool, right? A posi, a spool, whatever you want to call it, and it would rob power. Also, an even unevenness in the track or deviating from exactly the straight line, any of those things will rob power with a locked rear. So for lower horsepower drag cars, an open rear just like this or whatever model they were using was the choice for a long time. And I'm sure it, in some form of racing today, there's still people who use open rears. So, how do you make an open rear work for you? But I mean, before we even go there, I, I see it in the comments already. There's, been, put a spool in it, put a locker in it, put a sure grip in it, put a posi in it. A, a posi, by the way, for terminology's sake, for you guys who aren't Chrysler, you know, uh, sure grip is Chrysler's name for positive traction, just like you know the locker for Ford, and but it, it's all the same thing. So people are like well, put a posi in it, put a locker, put a spool. Those things aren't available for every rear. They're available for all the popular rears, but it doesn't cover the this the gamut, the spectrum of the world of cars. So it's not always practical or possible. It's also not affordable for a lot of people. A sure grip unit for an eight and three quarter like this will set you back five or six hundred bucks. That's that's not chump change. So unless you're actually dealing with a drag car, you know, a higher horsepower drag car, where there's just no way you're going to get both of these tires to, to react and, and hook evenly, it's really not necessary for a cruiser, for a, for a, a, a regular muscle car. Uh, an open rear is just fine, and it's in my mind, for a regular driver, it's preferable because there are power losses involved in locking both of those, both of the wheels together. So your options getting away from, away from an open carrier but not going to a spool would be, for a lot of rear ends, they make what they call a mini spool. And all that is is just a replacement for the spider gears. It's just a block that fits in between the two axles. It's held in place by the pin. And that locks them up. You've got all of the, uh, all of the benefits of having a completely locked rear, along with all of the liabilities of having a completely locked rear. That's the cheapest, easiest way to go. The most common way people deal with a an open rear where either the finances or the availability of locker, sure grip, spool isn't there, is to simply weld the spider gears. Now, I always felt like a dirtbag welding spider gears growing up, you know, because that was the thing to do. You, you, you mess around with cars, you're broke, it's like, I can't afford a sure grip unit, I can't find a sure grip unit, I'll weld the spider gears. I always felt like a dirtbag doing it. Until, I don't know, I guess it was about 20 years ago, I, when I was in the parts business, just getting into the parts business, I bought a, uh, a load of, of Petty Enterprises stuff, right? Their short track stuff. And in this, in this load of parts was, were several eight and three quarter center sections, and they all had welded spider gears. So even Richard Petty, even Petty Enterprises, wasn't bothering to spring for spools and stuff like that. In the day, they were just welding up spider gears and sending them. And in fact, one of those rears the, the the ring pinion the the spiders everything that came from that load I held on to for some reason and it's the one that's currently in slag hammer it's a 430 with welded spiders so here is a 323 that I welded the spiders up on for power tour this is when slag hammer went out on power tour and you can see in here the welding it held up fine now I did this with a flux core most people prefer like a stick welder for this type of thing I just use it with I just use a flux core welder on it and it held up fine this has over 2,000 road miles and several quarter mile uh, eighth mile drag runs on it and it's fine she's good to go and I keep it together because at some point I may need a 323 rear to throw one of our other cars where weight is a consideration, because there is a significant weight difference between 
a welded spider, you know, welded carrier, stock carrier, and a spool, then I will use a spool, like for instance in Bottle Rocket. Weight is a, is a prime consideration on that car, so it has a spool. But that's the easiest, simplest way to go about fixing one of these things. Don't feel bad about it. There's, there's people, there's millions of people all around the world that weld spider gears every day to go off-roading or go drifting or do all of these things, dirt track racing. Welding spider gears, there's no crime or sin to welding spider gears. Do it right so you won't have any problems. You always want to heat the gears before you start welding. Grab a torch or a map gas torch or whatever and get them nice and hot and make sure that you, you weld in between all of those teeth and build up the weld, bridge the teeth. You can go as many laps as you can. You can't put too much weld in there. The other thing, if you don't want to go through that trouble of welding spiders, you just want to leave it open, but you want to increase your chances of getting both tires to bite when you hit the gas, Weight, adding weight to the right rear of the car is always a good idea, but stiffening the spring on the right rear of the car is the way you get it to not torque up. So you can use an air shock on the right side, on the, on the passenger side, and just, just put a couple of pounds of air in it, just enough to preload that so that when you hit the gas and the rear end wants to rotate away, it has resistance and doesn't want to lift. There's several different ways you can go about it. But it's always a matter of, of limiting the amount of upward travel from the right rear tire. If you can get, if you can create a situation like in those early top fuel dragsters where there is no torque reaction, the rear end is not allowed to rotate up, or you can have a direct torque reaction pushing down on the right rear, like on those cars, then there's never a need for a locked or a posi or, or a spool type of rear. An open rear will function just fine. So, I, I, also, the reason I'm even talking about any of this now is because this is a rear, I've got 430s in Sledgehammer right now, but it needs more gear, I think. So, I've got, this is a set of 486s that I'm putting together to swap out the 430s. And this is a, a carrier that I'm going to weld the spider gears on tomorrow. So... I don't know, do you guys want to actually see a tech video on welding spider gears or have you figured that out on your own yet? Let me know in the comments. So, that's it. Open rears, they're not the end of the world, they're not terrible, there's lots of workarounds and there's some places where they're actually beneficial. I hope you got something out of that. I'll see you tomorrow.